if you are a cook or a chef, you work in a kitchen, maybe you're a baker, you'll probably know what these items are. So we've got five variations here of what's called Mesa Lunas, okay, which stands for half moons. Actually, who are watching carefully, you probably say, wait a second here. There's one there that is not a traditional Mesa Luna, or it's maybe not a Mesa Luna at all. Which one is it? Well, this one is definitely a Mesa Luna, but it's a double blade. This one is also a Mesa Luna. Kind of a small one. Maybe these you're going to cut some dough. Possibly, or maybe chop a salad. I don't know. Uh, what's this? What kind of Mesa Luna is this? Well, it looks like a Mesa Luna. I'm sure it could work like one as well. Right? But it is not a Mesa Luna. The handle itself is not wood, it's like a solid piece of metal. All the other Mesa Lunas have wood handles. Okay, this one is much heavier. This is made for skinning maybe a walrus or something like that up in, uh, maybe up in Alaska. Uh, you can hang onto the hide and pull it away. Pull it away. Scrape. Alright, so, very interesting. So we're going to select one of these to uh, uh, to completely restore, refurbish, put back into service. All right. So we're not going to be doing much skinning in the near future. So we're going to set this one aside. Uh, herbs. This is winter, so we're pretty much buying this stuff in the supermarket still. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful double handle or double bladed. Mesa Luna really is gorgeous. Wood handle. This one has a manufacturer's name on it. We're going to set that one aside for now. I'm going to select from these two. All right, these are pretty much the same. Same design, the blade, very similar. Okay. The shaft or the, the Y, this is like a wishbone. This one's more of like a, a Y, okay. Uh, handles are very, very similar. Uh, they both have this line right down the middle. One is screwed on, appears to be screwed on. The other one is um, got a shaft that goes through the handle and is rounded over or peened over. Okay, so I think we'll go with that one. That one's a little bit more unique, if you will. All right, so we got this Mesa Luna from the uh, from the uh, turn of the century. Okay, this is right around 1900. I'm gonna do a restore on that. Um, this one is is a little bit more unique because it has a handle. The shaft is drilled all the way through, and uh, it's got like a retaining washer here, and then it's peened over. So. That usually means it's, uh, you know, that, that that's a good indicator of edge when things are peened over instead of like screwed on or so on and so forth. So this one may even be older than 1900. Okay, so we are going to disassemble this unit and uh, bring it completely back to a point where it's going to be usable in your kitchen. First thing we're going to do is we are going to because these uh, these these points are peened over, okay. Uh, so the way I uh, remove the peening or pull back the peening is just to get a vice grip and just squeeze on the shaft.
So we use the vice grip to grab a hold of the shaft where it's peened over and we just kept working it, working it, working it. And you can see that we drew it in. We were able to draw it in. Okay, so we've got the same situation on the top here, on the handle and the shaft, okay? So you can see this, the shaft is peened over. It's got this washer, okay? What we want to do is we just use a vice grip and just little by little. Wiggle it back and forth, just work it. Don't spin it. There you go. Okay, it was a square shaft. Look at that. So I'm glad I didn't spin it now because or else I would have rounded that off. Okay, so our plan for this, okay, to make it usable, last long, um, you know, in our own kitchen, is to, and make it corrosion resistant, is to nickel plate. Okay, all the hardware. Okay. Oops. We're going to nickel plate all the hardware here. Okay, there isn't much of it. Uh, that way it's corrosion resistant. Okay, so we're over here at the brass wire wheel. We're just going to clean up the wishbone. Okay, uh, we cleaned up the blade on a brass wire wheel very well, but there's so many low spots that uh, we want to make sure that the rust is uh, definitely gone before we nickel plate it. So in an effort to reduce the likelihood of any, rest, uh, any rust still existing, we're going to just hit this once with a rust and blue remover. Rinse them off in cold tap water. All right, so we thoroughly dried off the treated blade and uh, hit it with a heat gun. Make sure it's 100% dry. And now we are going to run this, uh, we're going to run some sandpaper over this. So to make this easier to sand, what we have is we have a uh, fishing magnet, okay? So we just take, anytime we have steel like this, flat steel like this, hard to hang on to, just put it on the bottom of that magnet. And that's like, you know, it's holding on to it. Now we can just concentrate on sanding.
edges for some reason were just straight out. Uh, so I just beveled the edges, just rounded over the edges. Okay. Much nicer. All right, we'll let that sit a couple hours. That's just uh, some basic uh, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil. Let that soak in. Get a second coat. Okay, while we let the uh, handle dry, we uh, are going to work on this retaining washer. This is uh, just a basic piece of soft steel, and uh, we, make, we need to make a new one. This one is shot. All right, so we let that dry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wax this handle, seal it. Oh, we got some beeswax. All right, our heat gun. Uh, microfiber towel here, cloth, and rub that out. Okay, there you go. Okay, we are ready for reassembly. Let's do a washer. 